Hi, welcome to a calculator tutorial from Equator. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri, a Persian from Khurasan. In this video, we are going to learn how to use this Casio FX83 GTX and Casio FX85 GTX. This is called a classless calculator series from Casio. This is a full manual that covers everything. So please select chapters. The larger screen, click on this area of the player so you can see all the chapters on your mobile device you will see the menu when you touch it you see all the chapters and touch and then click to move to that section of the video so enjoy and subscribe i have zoomed in so you can see the text large whenever the bottom of the keyboard is needed i'm going to push it so you know for the first time which key i pressed so the first thing is that this calculator has very high resolution text it has also this protective cover when you're carrying it in your backpack make sure to use it so the numbers will not rub off and also it has natural algebraic writing which i'm going to show you let's reset the calculator so we have the same settings for all press shift nine and then three and then equal i'm pressing this equal sign and then press all clear ac to turn the power on if it is off we press this button which says on and then the shift key is one of the important key that we will be using it it has like a yellowish color here i could not make it yellow on the screen so you could see it all the text that you see that they have different color for uh, they will function when you press shift for example this key is square root when you press it it is just for the square root you enter the value and this is the cube root at the top of it so you have to press shift and press this button so it becomes cube root the same way for example this is sine and at the top of it we have sine inverse so we will press shift to switch the key to any of these yellow labels that are beside the key when you have something on the screen you press all clear to exit to turn off now because off is the second function here i have to press shift and off shift and then all clear the calculator is turned off the calculator will turn off automatically in 10 minutes if there is no activity so first let's set the display contrast we press shift setup shift and then set up this button and then we press twice the arrow once twice and it says number three contrast i'm pressing three and here with these two arrow on the right it makes it darker on the left it makes it lighter as you can see i'm going to make it the darkest because of this video you see it becomes very bad so this this amount is enough and all clear to exit this we can move the cursor which we are going to see it practically later then we have the alpha key alpha key is written here with a little uh, purple or red all the keys that you see that they have red all of them will be activated when you press that uh, alpha key for example this sign key in here this is sign and but there is a d in order to activate the D, we press alpha and press this button and you see we have D on the screen, which will later I'm going to explain it. This key here has two functions, menu and setup. By default, we, if I press it, it shows some menu and if I press shift and it becomes setup. So there will be other options for setup. We have mode list. If I press this menu, it shows you modeless number one calculation so this is now highlighted with, with the arrow i can go left and right or i can just press one to go into that mode and number two is statistics number three is table of value and number four is ratio calculation now let's press one so i'm going to normal mode so majority of operation that we do is in normal mode unless I mention it. So menu and one, menu and one will always take you to normal mode. First, uh, let's look at the decimal mark. We press 
shift setup down and then number four we can either select dot or comma for our calculation so from here depending on the region that you are for numbers a sub decimal point if you want comma or dot selected here so one is for dot and two is for comma now if I put 2.3 you see it is now comma but here it is dot let's change it shift setup once twice number uh, four and then dot press equal then it become dot digit separator if you want to separate some values for example if you want to set 3500 after every uh, three digit or thousand you have a, you want a space then we press shift setup once twice and then digit separator number one and here we can select it on or off if you select it with on there will be space now let me enter 3500 if i press equal sign you see the space here if you don't want it just turn it off shift setup once twice digit separator one and off if i press equal the space is gone we have something called recurring decimal place later on i'm going to explain it but here quickly if you want to uh, do for example if we do shift setup once down three we can turn it on and off if i press on and if i do now one do 10 over 3 10 divided by 3 now that the, the reoccurring decimal place the dot at the top shows that there is more value but if you press s and d you can see it let me turn it off so when you turn it off it will show us uh, 10 divided by 3 like that let's, let's reset shift 9 3 equal all clear let's do some basic calculation if you want to do 4 sine 30 times 3 plus 10 something like that so we will do it like this 4 and then sine as you see as you can see sine already opened for the 4 we don't need to put multiplication and then 30 close it and then times open a parenthesis 30 plus 10 times 3 and then press equal and if you need to do minus 2 use this minus and then 2 that is the proper way if you want to do 9 times minus 3 divided by, by minus 6 so we have to pay attention to this minus and this minus we will use this value 9 times minus 2 divided by open a parenthesis minus 6 like that 9 9 times minus 2 is 18 so the answer is 3 but also you can do it like this open a parenthesis 9 times minus 2 and then close it by minus 6 and the answer is 3 so if you want to do let's say open 3 plus 2 closed minus 4 plus 10 you don't need to close up the, the last parenthesis just press equal you get the proper answer no worries let's do some basic fraction here 1 divided by 2 we press this button the cursor goes automatically to and and here we we press the arrow go to the right and then plus 5 over 3 and then equal that's the answer we can press s and d to see we are going to change it later it's just default if you want to do some max fraction for this here we press 3 and then shift 
this button now it goes to the max fraction mode one and then with the arrow go down two with the arrow go to the right plus five and then shift with this max fraction three with the arrow go down two and then equal you get the answer for example all clear six divided by two open parenthesis one plus two equal and added parenthesis but don't worry with the arrow we can go and make two three let's say delete it and make it three so with this arrow you can change the sign make this multiplication so left arrow and then delete will move the cursor so you can delete it six divided by two square root of two i just press equal sign if you want to do square root of two let's say plus square root of eight square root all clear square root of two we have to go with the arrow outside if i press equal it's under the square root with the arrow get out and then put plus square root of eight now you get proper answer and this is the exact answer if you want fraction press this button s and d so you can get fraction you can do undo using alpha and delete here it says undo undo is the second function so we have to press alpha and then delete button let's say nine divided by three and then alpha undo the three will be undone so without even backspace undo will do that for you and if you wanted to change it to something else overwrite insert is also another feature with shift and delete this time shift and delete before it was alpha and delete now it's shift and delete let's say you have one plus sorry one plus seven over two and you want to make it instead of plus square root of seven over two in this case we just move the arrow to the point where you want and here before this and then shift insert and the arrow changed now you can press square root and everything will be under square root for example and then press equal to get the answer now the most important part is input output setting let's go shift setup all clear shift setup and number one is the most important don't forget this we always need it one and here we have tons of options this one says math in math out math in decimal out line in line out line in decimal out so all these options will make big difference when you enter the value or when you read it but one one is math in math out so i'm pressing one now math in math out Let's four over five with the arrow come here and then plus three over two and then equal that's math in math out we got math if you want decimal point just press s and d and the same way we can do all clear uh, one plus square root of two go down square root of two so math in math out has been simplified like this and if you want to do pi over six the letter pi is here the second function of times 10 to the x with a shift so all clear let me press pi shift and then this and when i press this button it goes at the denominator six equal so this is one over six pi and if you want to get it in terms of decimal point just press s and d now let's go to math in decimal out shift setup one and then select two math in decimal out now we will see this refers to input and o refers to output now let's do this um, math in let's open a parenthesis square root of two with the arrow go to the right plus two times square root of three so math in 
this will now give you line not in terms of math you will not see fraction until unless you press this button so by default this is giving you like that so perhaps most of the time you need to set the calculator in math in decimal out and the same way now you see there is a big difference now uh, 4 over 5 with the arrow to the right plus 3 over 2 automatically it shows the small point of course you can press S and D to change it like that and if we do all clear 1 plus square root of 2 over square root of 2 now the answer is directly like this before it was similar format now let's go to shift setup it says line in line out shift setup one and then number three line in line out now if we do four over five four over five it will be like this plus three over two this is line in and then the answer is line out now the beauty for this mode is that you will have multiple operation and you will see the result and the calculation for example now three plus two three plus three is six it shows because line there is no those fraction type long so it's line in line out and then now we got line in decimal out now shift setup one and then four the last one four over five this is line plus three over two and if i press equal now it shows decimal before it was showing fraction type now it shows decimal let me show you one and then three uh, five sorry four over five plus three over two so it was showing like that but in decimal it shows directly decimal like this and shift setup one four now let's see how we can do it in this mode open a parenthesis 2 plus square root of 2 2 plus square root of 2 close it you see when I close it it's under the uh, square root so get out and then close it and here divided by so because of this fraction we put divide 1 plus square root of 2 and then get out and then close it now we will get answer in terms of decimal we can have multi-line small font uh, with this calculator and it works only in line mode either line in line out or line in decimal out let's change it to line in line out shift setup one and then number three now we are in this mode we can select normal font or small font let's go shift setup down and then here it says multi-line font number two we can select small font because currently whatever you saw was normal now let's go to two now if i do uh, sign of 45 plus three you see this is very small but you can have multi-lines square root of five times three and then you can see we can have multiple lines it will not work in other modes if I shift switch switch one and if I go number two sign of three as you can see it becomes large so that's another feature that you might consider using it if you want to see multiple lines let's go shift setup one two shift setup one and then two math in decimal out now we don't need to press this s and d automatically it will give you decimal angle unit shift setup two is angle unit and here we get one if you press one it, the unit is set to degree radian and gradient 
and if I press let's say 2 R you will see R here and for degree you will see D for gradient you will see G let's, let's go sh shift setup number 3 in this case we see 1 for fix and so this is for number format and then we can select if I press 1 it says what is the fixed value that you want between 0 to 9 and let me select 2 now we have two fixed decimal places in case if you want to work for currency or for any reason if you just want two decimal places uh, this will work like that this is not two significant digits it's just two decimal places and if I do 100 divided by 7 you get two decimal places only now let's go to shift setup shift setup 3 and this time to scientific for scientific we can get significant digits and let's set it to 5 for in this case I'm pressing 5 now if I do 1 divided by 7 1 divided by 7 we are getting 5 uh, significant digits 1 2 3 4 5 let's go shift setup 3 normal and here in this case we are offered number 3 normal if I if this, it says select between 1 and 2 if I select 1 let's see 1 divided by 200 and answer is displayed like that 1 divided by 200 and if I press S and D you can see it in proper format and this works only x is smaller than 10 to the power minus 2 and x is greater than 10 to the power 10 for example if I have 1 divided by 4 you will see a proper value for the bigger values you will see it like that 1 divided by 200 you, you see it in that format now if we go to shift setup 3 shift setup 3 and then normal 3 and this time let's select number 2 now let's do 1 divided by 200 sorry 1 divided by 200 we are getting decimal so normal 2 maybe is the preferred method for you and this one now when x is smaller than 10 to the power minus 9 it will work or x is greater than 10 to the power 10 for example 1 divided by 10 billion will not be shown like this 1 divided by 10 and then times 10 to the power 9 it will show like this 1 times 10 to the power 10 fraction result if I press shift setup number 4 we can set it in two format uh, mixed fraction and improper fraction so in mixed fraction number one uh, let's press one all clear let's do nine divided by two it's shown like this but if i press s and d it shows or presented in mixed form now improper fraction if i select shift setup fraction result number four and then two now 9 divided by 2 will show 4.5 but if I press this it shows 9 divided by 2 it never goes to uh, the max fraction type so that also determines how data is presented on the screen now if we go to shift setup down 1 shift setup down and then 1 in this case we have frequency for the statistics either on for display off for not display which later on I'm going to practically show you this is for statistics table function if I go shift setup shift setup down to this shows how many functions you want in table of value either f of x or if you want f of x and g of x so in this case we press 1 for f of x and 2 for g of x now let's reset everything back shift 9 3 
sorry, shift 93 equal all clear. So default mode is calculation mode, and the math is math in, math out. Angle is degree, and number format is normal one. Fraction is D over C, and statistics frequency is off. And default table is f of x and g of x. Recurring decimal is on. Decimal mark is dot. And digit separation is off. And multi font uh, mode is normal font. So now let's see how we can use the constant such as pi. Pi is a second function of this 10 to the power. So you have to press shift and then this button to get pi. You can just press equal to see the value by pressing this S and D, otherwise it will be just pi in your equation or with the arrow come here and if you want to multiply or do something with it, that's fine. And the Euler number or Euler constant is the same button but this time you need to press alpha, so all clear, alpha and that's the Euler number. If I press equal, you see the value or use it in your calculation if you want. If you need something to the power 2 or a square it, very easy, we have a dedicated button here, 5 and then squared. If you need to do cube, we have another dedicated button here, let's say plus 3, 6 cubed or 12 cubed. And if you need something to the power 5, then in that case, let's say 7, then use this button here. And you will see empty space and type whatever power you want. If you need something with base 10 squared, in that case, we press shift, we, we press shift, 10, the 10 comes automatically, then you can type your uh, value or whatever you have, 2 or 3 or 10, whatever you have. If you need to put something to the power of uh, lo uh, a larger expression, open the parenthesis, 1 plus 2, and the same way press x to the power, and here 2 plus 4, for example, you can enter it the way it is. And if you need something to the power minus 2, in that case, we need to use this button here. That is 1 times 10. That's whatever you have times 10 to the power x. And 1, and then I'm pressing this button, minus 2. So that is your value, is S and D will show you that that is correct. If you need to do uh, Euler number to the power something, in that case we have a dedicated button here, we press shift and then ln, natural logarithm to the power, and then here let's say 4.12, it will do that for you. Now let's see about a square root, or clear square root of 25, we just do it like that. We press shift and this button, it becomes cube root of whatever value you want, 1, 2, 7 for example. And if you need larger than that, fifth root or whatever you want, in that case we need to press shift and this button here. It allows you to enter the root number that you want, fifth root, with the arrow come to the bottom and then enter whatever you have here, 187 for example, to resolve it. You can also do something like this, so first press square root and then press this fraction symbol, let's say 2.5 and then with the arrow come down, sine of 25, sine 25, and you do need to close the parenthesis, press, oh we got error, so in this case, we need to close the parenthesis because it's under the square root. If you need to do the log of number, we have a dedicated button, log, and then 41, for example. If you need to do 
log of base 2 of 18 in that case log base 2 of 18 we press this dedicated button log and then enter the base which is 2 with the arrow go to the right and then the number that you want it will give you the answer natural logarithm we have a dedicated button here just press it and then enter your value 41.65 I'm just closing it this time and if you need to do 5 to the power minus 1 because it is the same as 1 over 5 so we have a dedicated button for it so type 5 and then here we have this dedicated button automatically puts 1 over it so that is the value if or if you want to do calculation factorial is such that if we have factorial of 4 it means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 so whatever is this number start from 1 up to that number we have this button here 4 and then shift x to the power minus 1 is a factorial with a shift when you press shift so that's the value or if you want to do let's say 5 plus 3 open the parenthesis 5 plus 3 close shift and then that's fi 5 plus 3 factorial that means 8 it means 1 times 2 times 3 up to 8 now recurring decimal place let's reset shift 9 3 equal all clear to enable or disable it we go shift setup down shift setup down and then 3 this is turning on recurring decimal place on and off and let's say if you do 10 divided by 3 let me turn it on 1 10 divided by 3 so that's that's a value but if I press S and D you see a small dot here this dot refers to recurring 3 which means we have 3.3333 if you press S and D you will see it if you to disable it press shift setup down 3 and then 2 make off now if I press S and D you will see properly you can do also 1.6 plus 2.8 recurring decimal place to enter it we use and uh, we use this button here one point and then shift x squared the dot is at the top and six that makes calculation very easy too I couldn't when I when I when I try to type plus it doesn't work what it means is we have to go with the arrow to the right to exit from underneath of that dot plus two point shift this and eight and then equal and recurring decimal place in line out mode cannot enter for example if I go shift setup one and it says line out three now you cannot enter two point shift it has been disabled shift with this so shift setup one line out I'm going back to default to decimal but if there is a recurring decimal place you can see it in line out mode so let's turn it off go to shift 3 2 make sure to hit the subscribe button and subscribe now now let's learn how we can use percentage with this calculator Percentage can be presented in three ways. So you have three possible ways that a question will be asked from you. The first one will be 20% of 15,000. So I put here number one. So that's the first way that people will ask. In this case, we will enter it 20 times 15,000. So 20 times 15,000 and then shift with answer. This is a percent. and then if I press equal that's the answer the answer is 3000 now I'm gonna twist the same question remember the 3000 the second method is 3000 is what percent of 15,000 
So in this case, they are asking for that 20 that we know from the first question. So here is how we do it. All clear. 3,000 times 100, sorry, 3,000 times 100 divided by 15,000. It will give you that, that 20 that is needed. So that's the second method. And the third one is 3,000 is 20 percent of what amount? In this case, they are asking the answer should be 15,000, but we don't know it. So 3,000 is 20 percent of what amount? In this case, we are doing 3,000 times 100 divided by 20. So pay attention. In this case, in both cases, in the second cases, we enter 3,000 times 100. So you see this was times 100 divided by 15,000. And the last one is times 100 divided by 20. And as simple as that. Now, l let's say you want to increase 2,500 by 15%. Let's say you want to add uh, that value. In this case, we just type 2,500 plus 2,500 times 15 shift percent. So what it means is get 15 percent added to 2,500 or 2,500, and that's the answer. Or let's say there is 25% discount uh, uh, for 3,500. In this case, we use subtract 3,500 minus 3,500 times 25 shift percent, and that is discounted. You can do sexagesimal calculation, degree, minute, and second with this calculator. And to enter the value, we press our number in degree and press this button here. That is for sexagesimal, and then minute and second. For example, 5 degrees, 18 minutes, and 35 seconds. We enter 5 and then press five and then degree and then 18 minute and 35 seconds that's our value <coughs> press equal you will see it on the screen like that we, we can convert it for example if you want to en enter 25 seconds and 25 minutes and 35 seconds to decimal in this case we are missing that degree so we have to enter zero all clear zero and then this button and then 25 and 35. Now we entered it properly because we have to enter the degree part and if I press S and D you will get it in fraction, press it again it will be converted to decimal. I was in line mode. Now if you have 9 degrees and 18 seconds, now this time minute is missing so we enter all clear 9 degrees. Now we enter zero minute, zero minute, and then 18 seconds. And if I press S and D, I can get the decimal value. Now, if you want to convert two point, let's say 2.255 to sexagesimal, in this case, 2.255, don't worry about this typo, and then press equal. Once you have it, after pressing equal, press this button and it will be converted. If you press it again, it will be converted back. Very simple. Zero degree, 25 minutes, 36 seconds. To decimal, press S and D to get it. 9 and 18, 9 degrees, zero minute and 18 seconds. Remember, for the last one, you must enter. Otherwise, if you don't enter it, press equal, you will get error. We can do also multi-state, multi-statement. For example, you can do mm, one calculation, three plus three, and three times three, or whatever you want. This is just an example. We can separate them by this column, 
and the calculator will treat them as two separate calculations and you get separate result. You can do mm, one calculation, three plus three and three times three or whatever you want. This is just an example. We can separate them by this column and the calculator will treat them as two separate calculations and you get separate result. We press alpha and this button, that's for multi-statement. Let's do three plus three alpha and then three times three alpha and I'll let's add it sign add sign of 25 if I, if I press equal it shows the first one at the bottom now I can press equal to see the second one nine and press equal to see the sign or scroll up and down with the arrow key now let's see how we can use some engineering uh, numbers or calculation on the screen this engineering let's press 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then press equal because the number must come in here. If I press ENG, it will go to, into scientific notation. Press it again. If I press this again, it goes to zero, so three steps will be reduced. If I press it again, it goes to negative three. Every time it goes by the thousand of thousands of uh, value. And if you do now shift with ENG, there is an arrow, it goes backward. Shift ENG, shift ENG, and if you continue further, it will convert it to the method that fits your calculation. So in how many decimal places you want, this number is exactly the same as that, except it has been presented this way. And let's say you want to convert uh, take from prime factor of 1014 press equal it will be on the, on the screen now press shift and then FACT shift and this sexodecimal sexodecimal value so now it has been it has been prime factorized and if you want to convert it back to this number because the number is already here in this case we press shift and this factor again it will be converted back to the normal number calculation history you can see your previous calculations for example 2 plus 2 equal 3 plus 3 equal 5 plus 5 equal in this case we can go up we can see 2 by 3 plus 3 this arrow shows that we can have we have some value up and we have some value below so that's if I go up you, you can see you can see even the previous values if you see the value replay you can do it let's say 4 times 3 plus 2 you can go back and press equal or just come back the same way let's say you want to do change it go back change 2 to 3 go back with the arrow delete and make it 3 and still you can see the calculation before that not after that when you modify it also answer this answer button when you press it it will show you the last answer that was displayed 15 times this number that is this value 3330 and all clear if I press answer you will see it here but I can use my answer in, in my calculation with something else I just entered plus so it will work now let me show you how we can do memory calculation with this calculator let's see if we want to multiply 4 by 3 and divide it by 30 we multiply 4 times 3 and then equal that is 12 now we can get the 12 and press answer answer divided by 30 will do that for us so we can get the portion of calculation that we did before and do something with it just press answer let's do 1 2 3 plus 4 5 6 we did equal and now you want to just type 8 9 7 minus and then answer and that's the answer 
all clear. We have variables here. They are all labeled with red. A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, and M. These are the variables for memory that are available for us. Let's say we want to store 3 plus 5 in memory A. So 3 plus 5. And then we can press STO. When you press STO, the STO appears. And then any of these buttons with red from A to M, they are ready for you. If I press this button, it will be A now. So now it says that 8 went to A. All clear. And let's store 12 into B. 12 store B. When you press store, all these are available. Now you can enter it. To recall any value, we press shift. To recall the value, we press shift and the store will become recall. Now it will show you all the values, whichever you want. All the value, you can see it on the screen. And if I press A, A is given. And then you can do, you can do, let's say, plus 45. So we have added 45 into whatever value was in, in the memory, which was 8. So it's the C3. To clear memory A, for example, we store 0. So press 0, store A. 0 into A. Now if I press Shift Recall, you will see that A is 0, B is 12, the rest are all zeros. Then we have independent memory. Independent memory is such that you can add on top of it. Uh, but these are just single time use. If you put something else, it will be replaced. But this memory M plus, let's enter these values. First, let's clear the memory because there is something. Zero store M. M disappeared. And let's enter 10 times 5, 10 times 5. And then press equal, just M plus and it will be added. M appeared now. Now 45 plus 76, 45 plus 76 and then M plus and then 99 divided by 3 99 divided by 3 and M plus we have this if I press recall press shift recall you will see M equal sign that is 204 the sum of the values that we did so remember, shift, recall will bring it back to you. You can do also the same way subtracting, like say 10 times 5, let's subtract 10 times 5. And then this times, we don't press this button, we press shift and then M minus. So M subtracted, all clear, let's press, let's recall, shift, recall, and then M. It is now 154. To clear just the memory, nothing else, Let's press Shift 9, and here it says memory number 2. I press 2, reset memory, OK, equal sign, and then all clear. Now if I press Shift Recall, all the memory has value of 0. Now let's do some trigonometric functions and equations. So we can do sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's say cosine. This calculation depends on the unit that we have here, degree. In this case, cosine of 8.3 that's the answer let's say sine of 45 degree so it gives you the exact value if you press s and d you get the uh, decimal and you also you can enter sine of pi over 2 in terms of radian to enter the value in radian we have to tell the system that this is radian so sine of shift of shift pi over 2 and here we can enter the angle press option angle unit 2 and then 2 r so that is pi over 2 radian close it equal we got in terms of radian we got 1 but if you don't enter radian you get the answer in terms of degree sine of 45 you will see the answer there and then cosine of 36 you have you can see two values 
on the same line. A question something like this which asks that sine of theta is 0 0.8, what is that angle? Or they might ask cosine of theta is minus 0 0.5. So we want to find the angle. In that case, for example, for sine of theta which is 0 0.8, we use sine inverse and we use shift. So shift sine inverse and now 0 0.8 will give you the angle and the same way for cosine of minus so shift cosine minus 0 0.5 that's the angle we can do also hyperbolic functions for sine cosine and tangent at the end we have h so this is sine hyperbolic and also cosine and tangent and if you want to do sine hyperbolic of 5.3 so press shift one sine hyperbolic from this option and then one is sine and then 5.3 and equal that's the answer you can also find the inverse of hyperbolic function for sine cosine and tangent for example inverse inverse uh, hyperbolic sine of 100 we press shift and then one in this case, we see here sine, cosine, tangent, and then the inverse of all, 4, and then enter 100, and that's the answer. Now let's see how we can convert angle from degree, radian, and gradient one to the other. For example, 45 degrees to radian. First, we must be in radian. Let's do the setup. Shift, setup, angle unit, 2 to radian so this shows now r here and now we can enter we can enter 45 and we have to tell the system that this is degree option angle unit two and then here we have degree radian and gradient so one now it says 45 degrees to whatever you have radian that's a radian value now 300 radian to degree so you must be in degree, shift, setup, angle unit, and then degree, one. Now we are in degree. So 300 radian, press option, angle unit, two, and then two radian. So it says 300 radian, two degree, press equal, and that's the angle. <coughs> now let's see how we can do polar and rectangular or Cartesian conversion. We, can, we have polar and rectangular and Cartesian so are two different na uh, names for the same uh, method. So depending on your class, so you either call it rectangular or Cartesian. For example, the theta is 36.8 degrees from this line up. And then R is the magnitude of this arrow or a vector. The magnitude is 6. And we want to find this X and Y. I want to find the tip of the arrow in here. So what is x and y? Let's enter, press shift and then negative. This minus is for conversion. It gives you rectangle, which means you want rectangle value. Press 6 and then comma. For comma, we press shift and this button, it will be comma. And 36.8, close it, equal. Now we see x is equal 4.8 something and then y in here there is a comma between with the arrow you can go to the side to see it so we found that value but if you are in line mode it will be much easier shift setup one and then three now we are in line mode and if i do shift minus six shift comma 36.8 close if I press equal you will see that X and Y is presented nicely and same line so each mode of this calculator has advantages and disadvantages depending on how you want to use it now let's see we have X equal 4 at this point and then Y is equal minus 5 for this point exactly for this arrow or for this vector theta we want to find theta and then we want to find magnitude r so r and theta 
for this point will be found. So we have the values all clear. Shift plus, this time I'm using plus to get R and theta. So it says now we want polar. So we want polar for shift comma and then minus five. Keep in mind that this is minus five. The reason for that minus five is because it's below this axis. And then close it, press equal. It shows the theta, the R magnitude 6.4 and theta is minus 51, which is correct. It's below the axis line. Now we have another question here. R, R theta is 50 degrees from this point below the axis and R is 6 and we want to find X and Y at this point. So X will be the answer should be negative and Y should be negative. Otherwise the answer is incorrect. And because from here to here we have 90 degrees, it will be counterclockwise from this axis, first quadrant, 90, and then we have 90, that's 180. Then we have 50 degrees. So we have to add it, 50 plus 90 plus 90, 230 degrees. Now we have theta. This theta is now 230 degrees from first quadrant. So let's enter it, shift minus, shift minus, and here six, shift, comma, 230. That's a typo. Two, three, zero, close, equal, and we got x minus 3.8, which is negative, and y is four point, minus 4.596, which is correct. Now let's see how we can do absolute value. For example, absolute value of 2 minus 7, we press ABS button here, dedicate it under inside it, 2 minus 7, and then close it. Because that's minus 7, the answer should be minus 5, but because we want absolute value, you will get 5. So you can do this in your calculation, and it will be very easy. And if you are in line mode, this, the answer is here. Otherwise, the answer will go below shift mode, 1 and 1. Absolute value of the function changed on the screen, 2 minus 7. ABS now disappeared. Press equal. It shows like this. But if I go back, mode 1 and then 3. If I press this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and subscribe now. Now let's see how we can uh, pay attention to the random numbers that this calculator might be using. So I'm in decimal mode in math, shift setup one, two. And if you want to generate random number, let's say between zero, zero up to nine, 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 we press this shift and then decimal point shift and then decimal this gen generates random and if i press equal sign every time i press equal it generates a new number uh, this equal sign <coughs> if you want to generate between 0 to 999 just multiply it by thousand meaning type thousand shift and then random so whatever value you have will, will be multiplied by 1,000, so you get an integer. I'm pressing equal sign continuously. And if you want to generate a random number, let's say between 3 and 15, we use alpha with the same dot. So alpha, this dot is now random integer, this red. And here we, we enter 3, shift comma, and then 15 close it and then equal so now we get between 3 and 15 if I press equal sign continuously 9 10 3 14 8 so that's a random generation of the number let's have a look uh, at 
how this calculator is rounding certain values, so you are aware of that. If you divide 10 by 3, 10 divided by 3, you will see that it shows something like this, and that is a ninth dig digit. So we have nine pieces of trees. But internally, it keeps track of 15, 15 digits. So do not worry about it. It's very accurate, up to 15 digits. Let's say if you want to do 200 divided by 7 times 14, and you will see that this is giving you 400. But in terms of rounding numbers, you will see that th that's not supposed to be like that. Let's say if you do 200 divided by 7, so we have this number. Now, how come we get back 400? Because it's rounding the number to give you that value, let's say times 14, and it gives you 400. So that is a reason for the rounding, because if it was not for the rounding, you should have not gotten this 400. Now let's go with the fixed three digits, shift setup three, shift setup three, three number format, one fix, and here we enter three, now it shows fix, Let's do 200 divided by 7, 200 divided by 7. And as you can see, we, have, we see only 3. And in this case, even, it is taking, uh, tracking this up to 15 digits. Now, let's do shift and then 0. And if I press equal sign here, this number went there, and that is round it to this value. I multiply this by 14. I'm getting 399-9994 instead of 400. Now let's see how we can use permutation and combination. First, let's reset our calculator because we did a lot of work. Shift 9, 3, equal, all clear. So we are done. So we are on the same page together. Permutation and combination, we have NPR, that is permutation. So we, we have N and we have R, and then NCR, that is for combination. So here is the condition. N is smaller than 1 times 10 to the power 10 and greater than or equal R, and R is greater than or equal 0. So here is the first example. It says how many four digits can be produced using 1 to 7. The number 1 to 7, in this case, 4 digits using 1 to 7, we, use, we enter 7 and then shift with multiplication sign, that is NPR and then we have NCR, so multiplication is for permutation, and here, and then we enter 4 and equal, so that is the answer. And here is another question, all possible winning numbers if pick 6 out of 49 balls, that's like lottery, so pick 6, 49 ball, and here is how we do it, we say 49, and then shift division, that is now for combination, and then 6, so we enter the total number of balls, and then the number of pick, 6, and it says 13,983,816. So, what it means is that your chance of winning is 1 in 14 million. So, do not buy lottery. Money is wasted. Purchase orange juice instead. It's good for you. Now, let's see how we can use table or table of values. We create table based on one or two functions. So, we generate values. For example, let's say we have function 1. 2x squared plus 1, and then that's f of x, and then we have g of x, x squared minus 5x plus 3, and you want to evaluate the function 1 with 1, and then with 2, with 3, with 4, and that's the result. Let's see. So let's see the table, shift, set up, go down, and 2. Table, in this case, we can select 
f of x or if you want two functions f of x or g of x we are selecting two in this case for our example so so first let's go to the mode three which is table we press menu and here the third one is table i can press three but let me show you three is table so i'm pressing three and it asks for f of x and we enter the value so we enter two and then for enter two and then alpha and then close parenthesis this is bringing the x for me and then squared plus one after that just press equal and it asks for and it asks for g of x let's enter this equation uh, alpha x squared minus 5 alpha x alpha x and then plus 3 equal now it says start let's say start of a value we want to evaluate it with starting with 1 and then equal and end with 5 you can put 3 or whatever you want 5 and then step step means every step it increments it from 1 x equal 1 and the next time it will be x equal 2 3 4 5 but if you go 2 it will increment by 2 so I'm going with step of 1 and then equal it shows iteration value of x and evaluated f of x and evaluated g of x you can go down up to 5 here and you can see them to enter a new function just press ac and you will see here let's say 21x and plus 16 and this is minus 6 and then equal start 5 and with 8 step of 1 I'm pressing equal and here the evaluated values it says 5 6 7 8 and those are the values calculated keep in mind that f of x can go up to 45 rows if we have only just f of x but if you have f of x and g of x it can go up to 30 rows so that is the limit to exit table mode press menu 1 menu and then 1 now let's see how we can do ratio calculation with this calculator so here we can select from menu and 4 press menu and this is the ratio you can go to the right or just press 4 and once you are here we get 1 or 2 so the first one is x we want to find x a to b is equal x with respect to d or a to b is equal c with respect to x in this case x is on the other side and I, I give you a very practical example people uh, prepare photos uh, for TV or for your phone the TV is 16 to 9 and your phone most of them are 9 to 16 so the uh, ratio is the opposite so that means if this is 16 inch and that is 9 so because the phone is vertical it will be 9 to 16 in this case so this 9 will be here so we will switch it but this is just for TV so you want to take a picture and prepare it in Photoshop or something that fits perfectly on the screen so we have 16 to 9 and all TVs was 4 by 3 I'm just reminding you so how to fit a photo if the width is so we so here we have only one thing the width is 3200 pixel what should be the height so we have one value we have 16 to 9 and we have 3200 so that's the width but we want to find the height in this case let's let's go to option one if I exit you will see this screen option and then one and then select two because we have the C and we don't want we don't know the X so I'm pressing two now we enter 16 and then press equal it goes and enter 9 and here we enter 3200 for the width of our picture if I press equal 
it enters, now we press equal again, it says X is 1800. What it means is the height of the picture should be 1800. So you got the idea. If you want to change the type, you press option and then one. And in this case, if you want to go to the next one, one. So now it asks you the value for this and X is on this side. Now you enter the value on the right side. So you can find the ratio. To go to normal mode, press mode one. Let's see how we can do a statistical calculation with this calculator. It has tons of excellent features. First, we have to go to statistic by pressing menu and then two. I can press two or I can go to the right. So I'm pressing two. Now we are in this screen. To exit the statistic, keep in mind that all the data will be lost. Once you enter the data and exit, let's say press, let's say you press mode and one, you exit, data will be lost. So two. So this is now we have single variable, one variable, and then we have regression, linear regression, something like a plus bx. This is for linear regression. And then we have quadratic because we have x squared, you see at the bottom. We have constant and then x term, one coefficient and then second coefficient c. And then we have uh, number four, logarithmic regression. It has ln, natural logarithm. This screen shows that we can go to the next screen and here we have exponential, exponential logarithm. Uh, regression and then we have an exponential regression a b to the power x and then we have a x to the power b that's a power regression and then we have inverse regression a b over x so these features are all available that when we start it we will select and let's go for the single variable and we can press option and then select type one. It will allow you, that is one variable, I'm pressing one. It says memory will be cleared, yes, press equal. So, so that is single variable. So in this case, I'm entering one and then equal for each, press the number and then press equal sign. So one, two, two one and then equal sorry one equal to two and then three 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 equal three equal three equal and then four four five four equal four equal five equal so we have ten values and press all clear to exit it shows here we are in single variable see all the options that that are available if we press option button and then go down we have three main uh, items here. Number one is summation. And here we can get sum of all values, sum of the square of all values. So that is a summation and sum of squared values. And if I press one, and then you can do it in your calculation or press equal, that's a sum. All clear, option, let's go down, and then two. If I press two, you see all these variables that are available for statistics. So for example, we have mean, we have population standard deviation, and we have pop population variance, and then population standard deviation, number of items, no, and number of items. And if I press all clear exit option and then two it shows all the variables everything that you have based on the data that you entered you will see it this scroll bar shows that we have next screen and we have more maximum is five and so forth so all the value will be displayed all clear to exit so let's go for option and then three data in this screen we can see the data and review it. If you want to change any data with something else, press option for data and then go to the particular data. Let's say you want to change the 32 to 
65 just press equal and it has been replaced if you have a data and you want to insert to the row just press option for data these are the values and if you want to let's say insert something in here bring the cursor there press option and then to editor here it says insert row number one once you select it the value will be pushed down there is a new row for you to enter and come to the right and fill it up to delete a row just B on the row let's say 2.1 if I press delete it has been deleted one value went up but let's say press delete 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 you see all of the values when you delete X Y will be deleted like that frequency on and if I go now option 3 data you will see the frequency column and on this screen if I press option and then go down 3 it gives you minimum uh, minimum maximum median first quartile and third quartile are available so you just press the appropriate number to see it for example 3 median and that's the value and simple single variable is enabled frequency shift setup down one and then frequency on now it is turned on <coughs> keep in mind that in terms of capacity for single variable we can have 160 line if there is no frequency and we have 80 line with the frequency but if we have pair variable x and y 80 line when there is no frequency and we can have 53 line with the frequency let's enter these values 1 2 3 up to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then 10 and let's enter this for the frequency so come to the right and if I scroll down it goes to the top if you have a lot of items so this is how you do it let's put one two one one equal two equal one equal and then two 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 equal two equal two equal and then three four two three equal four equal two equal and then one so we entered all the values so to display the values I'm pressing all clear option and then two these are all the values related for the data I just entered so we can also see sum of squared even it, it shows here but if you want it if you want to use it in your calculation uh, press option go down summation one and then sum of the squared number two press equal to see it so let's press option and, and one and change type so let's go for logarithmic regression it says yes shift one and number four I'm selecting logarith logarithmic regression remember the frequency is still on so go option 2 2 option 2 for editor 2 delete all so everything have been deleted if there was any now let's have an example of linear regression we have these values and we want to change it so first let's go to linear regression option select type 1 so this is our linear regression two and our data is in paired of x and y but we don't need frequency so let's shift setup down one and two turn it off so the frequency disappeared now let's enter them I'm entering all x this column is x and x and this is all y and y so let's enter one one point two one 
3. So I enter 10, come to the right, and then just go down. It will scroll to the top, so you don't have to spend time. 1, 1 1.1, 1, 1, 1 1.1, and then 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.2, 1.3, equal 1 1.4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 8. So 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 and the last one is 2 so we entered all the data and exit option 2 and option and then 2 so you can see all the values scroll down everything that you need statistically you can see that so all clear option 3, all clear option and then 3. Here we can see some of the important values that display the regre regression calculation. So you have the constant term, we have the coefficient and the regression coefficient, R. So the term and all of them will be shown on the screen. If I press option, option and then down one you will see different summation depending on regression so you have all these different values that you can see all clear let's say we want to calculate estimate when y is equal minus three we want to get the or x hat here is how you do it so enter minus three and then option down four regression and here again we want to get 4 so it says when y is minus 3 get me the x hat and here is a value and if you have x and you want to get y hat the same way we will do it 2 option down 4 regression because we have x and we want y put 5 so that is that you want that's your answer make sure to hit the subscribe button and subscribe now let's see how we can do logarithmic regression option one and then four this is logarithmic so let's enter these values we can delete all these values very easily. Press Option, 2, Editor, Delete All, 2. So everything has been deleted. Now we'll let's enter 29, 50, 74, 103, 118. That's X. Go down. And here, 1.6. 23.5, 38, 46.6, 48.9. So we have all the data, all clear to exit. And now we can view statistics by option down to. These are all the values that are available. You can view them or you can use them. Let's, let's say if I press 1. Here, if I press 3, I can press it. I can see the standard deviation, or I can do by arrow go left and then add whatever you want into your calculation. Let's say all clear, option, and then 3 will give you the constant term, the term coefficient, and the regression coefficient. All of this will be displayed but you can recall it and use it as well. Now, based on those values, let's say if you have y equals 73, you want to get our x hat estimate value, all clear, 73, option, 
down regression four and then because we want x hat just press four press equal that's calculated value and if x is 80 and you want to y get y hat same way all clear 80 option down four five so you want y that's done tons of calculation will be done very quickly now let's see we have exponential regression we have y is equal we have a constant term a and then we have e to the power bx so we have a b coefficient and here let's change the type option one down and then one that's e e regression we can from this screen we can delete them option two editor delete all you can insert the row as well so let's enter all these values 6.9 6.9 equal 12.9 19.8 point eight, 26.7 35.1 it's done come come to this side go down you are at the top 21.4 21.4 oh sorry 21.4 21.3 and 5.2 so we have all the values press all clear to exit and here view statistics option down to so we can see all the statistics that we want number eight for example all clear option three all clear option and then three so this is a regression uh, coefficients uh, regression coefficient and fixed term all of them will be displayed in here now let's use y is equal to get x hat so here 20 option down 4 and we want x hat 4 equal that's the answer and if you want to estimate y hat with when x is 16 16 option down 4 we want y just press 5 equal you can get it we have a b exponential regression in this case a times b to the power x change the type by pressing option one and then go down in this case we press two b to the power x again let's clear the data option two and then two delete it let's enter a b exponential regression these minus one minus one equal three five and ten come here go i made a mistake go da up 0 0.24 4 16.2 513 equal all clear exit so now we can see the statistics the same way option down two all the values are available here use them or just see them let's say number seven all clear option three all clear option and then three this is the regression values that you need constant term coefficient and regression coefficient now let's calculate or estimate when y is equal 0 0.1 get x hat 0 0.1 uh, sorry 1.02 and then option down 4 and then 4 here the calculated value 
and let's see the estimate when x is equal 16 get y hat 16 option down 4 5 y hat equal and that's the value so let's change the setting to power regression a y is equal a times x to the b option 1 and then go down and this time we go 3 let's clear it option 2 2 clear everything and these are our data 28 30 28 30 33 35 38 oh I made a mistake 33 35 38 go down go down like that 2410 2410 3033 3033 3895 3895 and then 5717 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. done all clear exit and it shows where we are <coughs> so view statistics option down two so all the statistics are available all clear option three option three option three so we got error with that actually I was missing one of the value that's why I was getting error so I've just entered it all clear I can do option and three here are the regression data based on the calculation now let's say we estimate a value when y is 1000 or clear 1000 shift down 4 and then 4 that is a calculated value and if you want to estimate y hat when x is 40 so 40 option down 4 5 that's y hat we are getting it we have inverse regression a is equal y is equal a b over x in this case so change the type by option 1 and then down 4 that's the last one let's delete the uh, data option 2 and then 2 everything is clear let's enter this, dat this data 1.1 2.1 2.9 2.8 2.9 4, 4 .9. go to the right scroll down it goes to the top 18.3 9.7 6.8 4.9 4.1 we have the data all clear so view statistics option down 2 we see them based on our settings 6 n 5 items we have all clear option 3 option and then 3 this is the regression So this is a statistical, so this is the straight calculation result based on the data. <coughs> now let's estimate x hat when y is 15, 15 option down 4, 4, that was a value. If you want to get y hat when x is 3.5, 3.5 option down 4 5 that's a value now let me show you how to replace the battery first press shift and all clear the calculator is turned off we are opening all these uh, six screws 
just remove it like this and here we have this double A battery like that and replace it with a new battery let me check the voltage of the battery it should be 1.5 volts or close to that so 1.5, 1.6, so that's fully charged new battery, negative on the spring, insert it, it's done. Once you replace the battery, make sure to reset everything, press shift 9, 3, initialize, and then equal, so make sure all clear, it is initialized. One battery and one screw. It just needs a flaps screwdriver. And let's just use this tiny and it popped out and that's a battery when And now let me show you the voltage of this battery. Now let me show you the voltage of this battery. And as you can see it is 1.47, that's 1 1.5 volts for this battery. To put the new battery, make sure that this button side is down and insert it from this side like that, like this, and then push it. Insert this from this side and tighten the screw. Or once you replace the battery, make sure to reset everything, press shift 9, 3, initialize, and then equal. So make sure all clear, it is initialized. The errors that you might get from your calculator, if you see math error, it's the range that exceeded. Uh, for example, in your table, you might have some value that exceeds the value, or you get illegal math like divided by zero, so that is math error and you see stack error the capacity of a stack or the capacity of vector which this one does not have it if you see syntax error that is format of writing you did not respect the way that calculator asked you to do it and if you see argument error that's format of writing like sign and open close parenthesis so you might have issue with that Range, again, will be range in the table, or start and end is different. Some technical information, number of digits is 15, and the calculation range is plus minus one times 10 to the power minus 99, two plus minus this value. Precision is plus minus one, a 10 digit for single calculation. So up to 10 digit. And for exponential display, it is plus minus one at the least significant digit. And here the calculation priority sequence, the parenthesis will be performed first. The function su such as sine, cosine, log will be later. And then we have all these values, factorial power root, and then fractions, and then negative sign, statistic mode, multiplication. So these are the order, multiplication and division, and 10 addition and subtraction are done last. Stack limitation. So we can have all these levels of something multiplied by something up to seven, as you can see. Uh, so we can have up to 24 level of commands. 
otherwise you will get stack error here are the ranges that you see and Thank you for watching. This was a tutorial from Equator by Ahmad the Persian from Khurasan. Please thumb up the video and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you have comment or question, post it in the comment section below.